Hello everyone and welcome to Retail Archaeology and part 2 of our final look at Metro Center Mall in Phoenix, Arizona. In part 1 we took a look at the first floor of the mall because that's all that was open during that auction preview. But during this second auction preview day they had the second floor open. So that's what we'll be taking a look at in this video. It's weird there's just a chaise lounge sitting there. Or what store that came out of. Here's the All For Anime store. This featured quite a bit in a lot of my videos covering Metro Center Mall over the years. This store is still open. It actually moved to Paradise Valley Mall in Phoenix, Arizona. However, I'm not sure how much longer it's going to be there because the rumor is that Paradise Valley Mall will be closing very soon. I always liked poking around this store. It's so weird seeing this place without all the anime posters and everything all over. And of course I've got to get some footage of the absolutely no photo sign. <laughs> wonder if those anime posters were part of the auction. I'm sure it was. I believe all the fixtures in here were. It's a nice little bonus, though, if you can get the posters off cleanly. Or I guess you could just leave the fixtures as is and open your own anime store. <laughs> Let's go poke around in the back room. And it looks like they left a couple of vacuum cleaners behind. That's weird. Besides this poster here, we found some other artwork taped to the walls. There were some drawings taped down along the floor of the walls, and it looks like there may have been, you know, shelves and stuff that covered these up. So it's kind of interesting to see these exposed and left here. Here's one in full color. Just leave those behind for somebody else to find. I was really glad to finally be able to come up to the second floor, just because you can get some great shots of everything from up here. Here's a quick shot inside one of the empty shops. It doesn't look like there was anything in there that was part of the auction, though. From what I understand, the stores that had their lights turned on were the stores that had the different uh, fixture lots in them. I've always liked this storefront. I've always liked that kind of marble tile. I'm not sure what this was. It was, I'm pretty sure some sort of women's clothing store or dress store originally. And I think it was a independent dress shop at the end. And there's a lot of crap left behind in the dressing rooms in this store. I like the design of this store though. It's got a very 90s feel to it between the uh, checkerboard marble tile path that runs through it. You've got the curves on the ceiling, the pastel pinks. Clothing stores don't really look like this anymore. And that's what's been really interesting about this whole process of getting into these stores after Metro Center Mall closed is you can tell a lot of them were, you know, 80s and 90s mall stores that closed a long time ago and either have been empty for a while or like a mom and pop business moved in and just didn't really change anything. And so you kind of get to see a little bit of a time capsule in each empty store. Oh, look there, found the abandoned drink. Always got to have one of those in an episode of Retail Archaeology. That's gross. Somebody left their mask in here. What else do we have? We have a uh, random bottle of nail polish there. And a, uh, another abandoned drink. And it looks like somebody's gone through all of the drawers and everything looking for stuff. I 
Let's go poke around in the back room and see if we can find any clues as to what this place was originally. And uh, this place has a large back room. Do you know how to steam safely? Like I said, I think this was a uh, dress shop at one point, so that's probably what they're talking about is steaming the dresses. We got a drinking fountain there, and here's a quick look in the bathroom. Not much to see in here. Right on the other side of that wall at the end where an anchor used to be is where the Walmart is now. It's not actually connected to the mall, though. A lot of people thought that the Walmart being added a few years ago was going to save this place, but obviously that wasn't the case. Here's another place that I'm not sure what it was originally. If anybody knows, you'll have to let me know down in the comments below, but this is some sort of um, restaurant or something. They've got, you know, grills and, and deep fryers and stuff back there. We noticed this huge stain on the ground, though. I'm not sure what happened. I'm, I don't think that's water damage because the ceiling above it looked okay. So maybe one of the um, fryers or something leaked. It just looks terrible. This is another spot that I'm pretty sure was empty for a long time. So that would explain why that was never cleaned up. And here's an old Mr. Rags store. If you're not familiar with Mr. Rags, they sold urban and skate and surf apparel. I don't think they're around anymore. They do have a little bit of an interesting history, though. They were actually purchased by Claire's in 1998, and then they sold uh, the company to some investors back in 2002. And eight months later, in 2003, Mr. Rags had filed for bankruptcy. It was Chapter 11 bankruptcy, and news for them kind of ends after that. Um, I did look and see they have a Facebook profile, and they had done some posts back in 2017, so maybe there were a few still left. But it's interesting to see one, because I haven't seen a Mr. Rags in ages. I do remember them being in malls in the 90s. Here's a bunch of tables from the food court. This is one of the uh, auction lots that was for preview. I tried to turn some of those over because I wanted to see if I could find one of the ones with the uh, Bill and Ted's history on it, but those tables weigh a ton. We were making a bunch of racket trying to go through them, so we just kind of gave up. Now this is the Hot Topic that was here. It's got the uh, classic brick Hot Topic entrance. It's always weird to see one of these empty because this store is still popular. At least in malls that are still doing well. You can see here where they had the registers in the middle of the store. That's what all those electrical connections and everything are for. Sure does seem like a much bigger store when it's not full of whatever's trendy this month. Over to the right there is the entrance to the former Macy's, which was a Goldwater's before that. I've always liked those display windows, but they've been empty for as long as I can remember now. And there's the closed off escalators. I believe those have been closed off since I first started covering this mall. weird that there's just one mall kiosk here. Most of them are inside stores and they're part of lots for the auction.
even though this mall was dead for a lot of years, it's still weird to see nobody walking around down there. Even at its worst while it was open, there were still always at least a few people milling around. Here's the old Bath and Body Works. And I don't think I've ever seen one of these empty like this before, so this was really interesting. I was surprised how many fixtures they left behind. It looks like this store was remodeled not too long ago as well. For example, that sink there. I only remember seeing those in newer or recently remodeled stores. take a peek behind the counter here and it looks like all the cabinets and drawers have been gone through and cleared out already but here's the point of view of working at a Bath and Body Works in a dead mall you can poke around the uh, back room here Looks like that was the desk for the manager. Probably did things like schedules and things like that there. And the safe is still here, but it's empty, of course. And I'm guessing those were employee lockers. And look at the size of this electrical equipment. I'm getting strong Jurassic Park vibes from this that scene where they go to turn the fences back on and everything. It's interesting that there's a phone there as well. The sign on this store says Green Spa Reflexology, but this is very obviously an old Suncoast Motion Picture Company store. I remember Suncoast stores always being dark, so it's kind of surprising to see it like this now because you can see they have all the lights on, but it is still really dark in here. Kind of need to imagine that it, you know at one time all of these walls were lined with VHS tapes. That shopping cart there caught our eye, so we decided to take a look in this store's back room. And I have to tell you, this was one of the worst smelling places I've ever been in. The smell of mold and mildew was ridiculous in here. There's very obviously some leaks going on. For example, this one. I, I guess you could call this the mall's fountain <laughs> at this point. But that bowl has obviously been overflowing. And everything in here is just very musty and gross. It's interesting that they use this uh, shopping cart and uh, caution tape to kind of try and block off the bowl of water. It's strange. This room in particular was the worst. You can see some of the mold and stuff going up along the walls. Uh, we decided not to spend very much time in here at all, even with, with masks on. God knows what we were inhaling. And also, on the way out, uh, Mark noticed that the carpet is super moist. I didn't notice that at first, but if you kind of stamp around, you could hear and feel the water coming out of the carpet. I see you can see it there. Oh, I guess not all of the lights are on. There's one there that's not working properly. The second trip to film Metro Center Mall after it closed was really bittersweet because this is probably the last time that I will be in this mall. Once they're done with the auctions, I don't think there's any chance of this mall ever reopening or being redeveloped in its current form. And I have heard rumors that the plan is to demolish the mall completely and build something else here in its place. Thankfully, because this mall is kind of famous because it was in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure and 
because it was such a huge part of the Phoenix area for a lot of years, there is a lot of footage, including a lot of footage that I filmed over the years documenting this place, but there's even old videos that you can find on YouTube of what this place looked like back when it had the skating rink below the food court. And uh, obviously there's the film, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures. You can see what it looked like in the 80s. Now this store was probably the messiest and most trashed that we came across. It looks like this was some sort of uh, odds and ends store. It looks like maybe they sold some, not antiques, but older furniture, things like that. There's just a lot of weird things in here. I'm not sure what this store was originally, but it was some sort of clothing store because there are dressing rooms back there. And at one point this store was called Sassy because I remember in my first video of this mall it was still Sassy and I was making fun of the name of it. But there is just crap all over the place in here. It looks like a tornado went through a thrift store. Like, I never thought I would find an old busted up violin in a closed down mall. I think that thing's beyond repair. Mark found this kind of interesting travel chess set. That might be the least weird thing in this place to find inside a dead mall. Got an old clue game there. But yeah, just what a mess this place is. It is pretty amazing, even though this place is closed, how, how bright it still is in here. Oddly enough, they were still piping music into the mall, so unfortunately I can't really play the ambient mall noise for you here because it was actually particularly loud, the music here, and it, it triggers copyright on YouTube. There's the old Dillard's Clearance Center. And it looks like there's uh, another leak here, a ceiling leak. Looks like a lot of mold and crap growing around that bucket, so it obviously overflowed at one point, but it's empty now. This mall was obviously doomed well before the pandemic, but I think between the pandemic and then all of these maintenance issues popping up, like the leaks and the mold and all the water everywhere is really what caused this place to close down. At the beginning of the pandemic, all of the malls in Arizona had closed down temporarily. And uh, I think when this one closed down temporarily, a lot of those maintenance issues and everything caught up to it and it, it just became too expensive to fix for a mall that was already on its way out. There's all that white dust and everything down there on the first floor. I had mentioned in the in the previous video that that was dust and I was surprised how dusty it was, but then people pointed out, and I don't know why I didn't realize this, but that's most likely um, from dry chem fire extinguishers, from people playing around with the fire extinguishers, and that is what that stuff looks like. I, I saw a kid in high school one time accidentally, quote unquote, set one of those off in the, in the biology classroom, and it, it looks just like that. It's just white powder. There's so a lot of it up here, though. I 
Yeah, it's much thicker, that white dust over in this part of the mall. And we can see some of the little airsoft grenades and things that were left over from the airsoft tournament that they had here a few months ago. When this mall finally shut down, it was 47 years old, just, just shy of 50 years. And I always wonder when the people were, you know, putting the plans together to build malls like this and getting the money together and the resources and all the construction time that was spent, if they expected these buildings to last 50 years or longer than 50 years, it, it feels like something like this should be around for longer than 50 years. Obviously a lot of money and resources and whatnot went into this. I think this was a former Forever 21 store. And there is a lot of that white dust in here. The whole floor is covered with it as well as a bunch of torn up catalogs of some sort. This is another store that was just a really big mess. Got some filing cabinets and some desks over here. And that is disgusting. That is the last thing that you want to see in a mall. An algebra textbook? Gross. With the paperwork and stuff that's laying around all over the place, I think this might have been some sort of a career center or something. Hopefully they weren't helping people get jobs at this mall. It's always amazing to me that people feel the need to be this destructive also. All of this mess obviously is not just from them all sitting empty for a long time. I just don't understand the need to, to go in and just trash a place because you can. I mentioned in the previous video how weird it was walking around in here and not smelling the mall smells that I'm accustomed to. And this is one of those areas of the mall. This is the old play place, or at least what's left of it. And there was a Wetzel's Pretzels down there near it. And I'm used to smelling the pretzel smell and stuff over here. And now it's just gone. Something I was curious about is uh, the third Bill and Ted's movie just came out not too long ago, and I was curious to see if they would have come back here to film since this was San Dimas Mall in the original film, but it turns out they didn't, and I kind of understand why given the shape of the mall. It could have been interesting to the story, though, to write in how San Dimas Mall had died. Now this is the old GNC. And that is a lot of water damage on the floor there. I've never seen an empty GNC like this before, so this is really interesting. I'm used to uh, GNCs being one of the last things standing in a dead mall. Even though they covered the sign out in front of the store, and they also went as far as to scratch the name out on the thank you for shopping message there, you can still tell this was a GNC. Now, even though this mall is completely closed, there is still one store open here, that Phoenix Sofa Factory. The entrance into the mall is closed, but this store has an exterior entrance and it is still open. I'm guessing they put that tarp up to protect the door and everything from the airsoft tournament that was here. I'm wondering if they've made plans to move their store because like I said, I the rumor I've heard is that this mall is going to be demolished soon, so they're gonna have to find somewhere else to locate their business. We're now in the Sears wing of the mall and because this was the Sears wing, this part of the mall was really quiet and empty even when this mall was open. That Sears closed well before the mall did, which is a shame because that's actually was one of my favorite Sears stores. I love the exterior architecture. It's very much in a brutalist style. You can see uh, footage of it in some of my older Metro Center mall videos. And also it was a three story Sears, which I don't see very often. Yeah, this all pretty much looks like this, uh, you know, before the mall closed completely. We 
we can take a quick look inside the old empty sears. That might be the cleanest part of the mall now. It's funny seeing that public service announcement poster with the Lion King stuff on it because I'm pretty sure that's been there since I started covering this mall a few years ago. I think Bill and Ted would agree that what happened to their mall is totally bogus. I'll tell you what's not bogus though is the ceilings and skylights in this mall. I am going to miss those. It's sad to see this place go too because they haven't built malls like this in a very long time and they never will again. A lot of the malls that open in the 1970s and 1980s tend to be very unique. This one opened in 1973 and I can't think of another mall that looked like this one when it was in its heyday or even now. It, it has been remodeled but a lot of the original bones and things are still there. You can still see the original shapes and things. Oh, this is gross. What happened here? This stuff had been sitting for a very long time. I can tell you that for two reasons, because it was rock hard. We didn't touch it, but we could tell. And also there was no smell. So any smell that was going to come from all that is long gone as well. That is disgusting though. I don't know why people do crap like that. This will probably be the last time that I ever get into this mall again. So this will probably be the last video that I do covering it. I am going to put all of my Metro Center Mall videos into one playlist and I'll put a link to it here so that you can kind of come back and visit it whenever you want. No, it's not the same, but at least I've gotten a lot of footage of it over the years. I would love to see footage of the old arcade that was here that replaced the uh, skating rink. I've never been able to find footage of that. If any of you have any memories you'd like to share about Metro Center Mall, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments below. I am really glad that I got to get in here one last time just to capture everything as much as I could. See, that elevator's neat too. I'm going to miss that also. Well, this is where we're going to uh, unfortunately have to end our video. I hope you've enjoyed this one last look at Metro Center Mall. As always, thanks for watching. Want to see your name here? Head on over to patreon.com slash retail archaeology to find out how you can help support the channel. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out what's probably my last video on Metro Center Mall. If you enjoyed it, uh, please hit those like and subscribe buttons and also make sure to follow at the social media links down there because that's the best way to keep up with what's going on with the channel.